Apart from the Vatican City, the Philippines is the only country in the world where Catholic couples cannot be granted a divorce. Activists say it's time for a change and they're trying to push through divorce legislation, in particular to help women escape abusive marriages. But conservative Catholics here say such laws could cheapen the sanctity of marriage and may even tear families apart. I'm Fauzia Ibrahim. On this edition of 101 East, we ask just how much longer can Catholic Filipinos really promise to death do us part? It's the stuff of romantic dreams. The dress, the invitations, the cake. All for that symbolic day when a couple promises to love each other for better or worse. But what happens when the wedded pair do not live happily ever after? One or both parties might resort to legal means to dissolve the marriage, allowing both partners to move on with their lives. But not so for the majority Catholics in the Philippines, where divorce is not recognized by the church. Jennifer can't reveal her identity because her case is still in court. She says she was in an abusive relationship with her boyfriend for several years when her devoutly Catholic family convinced the couple to wed. It's not my own willingness to get married. I was forced by the people around me. So they felt that if you got married, the abuse would stop? Exactly. That's their specific term. Once I get married, once the particular marriage is already blessed by the Catholic Church, then the, there will be no physical abuse. Did the abuse stop after the marriage? Unfortunately, no. Did you think it would stop? I had hoped that by signing the papers and by walking to that aisle and by having the Church bless our marriage, it would stop. But it did not. It even got worse. It really got worse. After enduring several more years of domestic abuse, Jennifer decided it was time she and her son moved on. The only way she could end her marriage was to have it annulled by proving one or both partners were of unsound mind when they wed. I kept on um, asking that to my lawyer. They would, um, oh, do we need to file this? Do I need the paperwork for the criminal abuse? Do they need? Do I need to show the papers or the, the pictures that I've been physical abused? How about this report? No, that the, the judge would not recognize any physical abuse, that he would not recognize what had happened during the marriage, only before the marriage. Four years later and much poorer in the pocket, Jennifer is still awaiting the annulment. She says the whole process has left her emotionally traumatized. I did my best and yet I'm the one or I, I, they're saying that there's something wrong in me instead of recognizing what really had happened between the two people involved during the abuse and during the marriage, what had happened even before. There's already physical abuse. Why don't you recognize the abuse? Women's rights groups say there are a growing number of wives in the Philippines who find themselves trapped in unhappy marriages with no way out. There are only really three options open to Catholic couples who want to dissolve their marriages here in the Philippines. The first is through legal separation, in which both parties mutually agree to separate, dividing their assets equally. But in the eyes of the law, the union is still recognized and therefore neither party can legally remarry and must stay faithful to each other. The second option is something called a declaration of nullity, in which the marriage is considered void from the very beginning. This could be because of fraud like mistaken identity, a hidden pregnancy, or even bigamy. And therefore, the marriage is considered illegal from the very start. But children from such unions are considered to be illegitimate. And then there's the third and most common option, and that is the annulment through Article 36 of the Family Code, in which one or both parties are proven to be psychologically incapacitated and therefore unable to carry out their marital duties. Now, not only is this difficult to prove, but it also opens the justice system up for very rampant abuse. Well, there's a lot of um, investigation going on now with judges, among the judges in the Philippines, because some judges are more prone to give annulments than most, 
and after an investigation, the Office of the Court Administrator discovered that um, these judges um, um, were not exactly honest and accepted um, uh, some kind of money in order to allow people who are unhappy to have their marriages declared void under Article 36, sometimes without even going to court. Carissa is experienced in circumventing the family court. She separated from her husband 18 years ago and has since been seeking an annulment, a process she says has been ineffective and very expensive. Yes, I've had to pay quite a bit because at every step there's somebody who's willing to assist you um, just to make things easier. I know of some places that you pay a lump sum and they do everything just, just, just for you to get your annulment, right? And they say it's in the provinces and everything. But I found out too late. So I have to wait again. Since her separation, Carissa is with a new partner with whom she has started a family. But until her previous marriage is dissolved, she is unable to wed and get on with her new life. She says it's time the Philippines revise their marriage laws. When you think of annulment, it's for yourself. It's, it's like, how will I get out of it, right? But if there were a divorce law, and um, yes, you could get out of it, but you can't get out of it scot-free. You really would think twice about it. I mean, you know, in the States, they have alimony, they have child support. You can actually go to jail for these things if you didn't, if you didn't um, fulfill your responsibilities, right? Right now, once a person gets annulled, there's really nothing that will bind you to your, to your responsibilities. But conservative Catholics are against proposed legislation before Parliament to allow divorce. They fear such laws would undermine the sanctity of marriage. Divorce invites to broken marriages. It's easier because for example, my wife is already too old or ugly or whatever. I just box her and I get a new one. Uh, for example, I don't like my, my spouse anymore. I commit adultery and have another one. For example, I don't want my, my, my wife, my children. I will abandon them and, and put up a new family. I can do the, the grounds in order to get a divorce. And question is, how many divorces may I get? How many wives may I violate? How many homes may I destroy? How many families may I abandon? But proponents of the bill say implementing divorce laws won't lead to a rise in the breakup of marriages. Right now, 50% of all cases in family courts are for nullity of marriage. So I don't know why the church is saying that there will be an extraordinary number of people. We're there. We are there. Wake up. And she's rich. Young Catholic couples are expected to attend marriage preparation classes conducted by the church. These couples are taught how to deal with problems that may arise in their relationship. Church volunteers say such courses help couples find out if they are indeed compatible and are able to have a successful marriage. Some therapists feel that if divorce was an option in the Philippines, partners would not be serious in their choices. When a person knows that once I marry, you're the person for the rest of my life. But if I know that I want to marry you, but if I tire of you, I can change you. Okay, then they don't go through the process, the careful process of choosing. Okay, they don't go through the careful process of trying to make it work because they know it's an option. So they always have in the back of their mind, yeah, this is the escape route, anyway. right? Yeah, but <laughs> if you're going to choose your partner, okay, and, and you know, and, and you're very aware that this is forever, you're going to think 10, 20, 100 times, and you're going to make sure that this is the person that you can live with. 
Proponents of the bill are well aware of concerns that legislation may be abused and have included measures to ensure that divorce is not seen as a quick and easy way out of an inconvenient marriage. The court is mandated to make sure that the couple uh, should undergo counseling such that they can discern, you know, they can discern how grave the problem is. Meaning, uh, this is also giving respect to the existing culture. Emmy says many legislators agree there is a need for a better system to dissolve marriages. But given the church's influence, she says politicians are reluctant to support the legislation or see it pass. The majority are still uh, bound by the Catholic teachings and majority are politically also are bound by their parishes and the uh, hierarchy no, of the church. But if the hierarchy of the church tell his parishioners or the constituents, no, say, don't vote for this congressman, that will stick to the parishioners. While the church insists it has no political power, history has shown how the religious institution is able to influence state affairs. And as the guardians of the faith, many Catholics believe the church does have the right to dictate and preserve Filipino values. If the state has become uh, omnipotent practically, yes, the church will, will, will speak. If in those circumstances the church does not talk, and the church does not act, then that is not the church I know, and that is not the church I belong to. But as long as the Catholic Church exerts such influence over daily life here, Filipinos will continue to be bound by the rules of their religion. For more on the possible impact divorce legislation would have here in the Philippines, we're in the capital Manila. And joining us on the discussion panel are Representative Luzminda Ilagan from the Gabriela Women's Party and the co-author of the divorce bill. Anna Garcia is a counselor with the Women's Crisis Center, working with couples in troubled marriages. And Representative Elpidio Barzaga is also a member of Congress and a practicing lawyer for the past 22 years. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Now currently in the Philippines, there are three main options for Catholics to dissolve their marriages. Luz, if I could start with you, if these three main options are in place, why is there a need to introduce a divorce bill? Because one of the options, which is legal separation, does not allow couples who have separated to get married again. And there are a lot of couples who have been granted legal separation who would like to be able to move on and get married again. Also, the other option, which is uh, the declaration of uh, uh, the annulment, is very expensive for ordinary couples. And some people do not want to be declared psychologically incapacitated when they apply for annulment. Elpidio, do you think there's a need to review the current options or perhaps a need to introduce the divorce legislation? Well, personally, I think that the options available right now are already sufficient to address all problems which are being used as grounds for divorce. But as Luz has mentioned though, some of the options are expensive, like the one using Article 36, well, uh, and also legal separation where you can't remarry. Well, in so far as, as divorce is concerned, it would be as expensive, it would be as tedious, and it would be as hard as in obtaining an annulment of the marriage. The basic foundation of our society is the family, and in as much as family is the basic foundation of our society, the family solely depends on a strong marriage. And that is the reason why most of us are not in favor of allowing divorce in our country. Anna, if you've been counseling troubled couples for quite a long time now. Do you think divorce is needed in this country or are the three options available are sufficient? Um, I think the three other options are not sufficient because uh, in our experience, you know, a lot of women uh, have been seeking for another option because first of all, uh, it's really expensive, you know, um, sorting out to uh, annulment uh, option. And uh, because of that um, psychological assessment that is uh, being one of the uh, 
requirement, you know, in filing an annulment case. But as LPDO said, divorce would be just as expensive, if if not more. But I'm not quite sure about the the, the incoming bill, you know, of, of how tedious that is. But for the current current annulment option, you know, it's really uh, expensive. And other than that, of course. Uh, a lot of um, women, you know, have been separated already from their uh, spouses. Yet, you know, uh, there's no formalization of their, you know, of that uh, situation, you know, wherein they're no longer uh, living together. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, uh, quite a hypocrisy, you know, of our society to actually uh, deprive women of uh, women and men, you know, of their rights, you know, to formalize such situation of separation by you know prohibiting another option where they can afford to resort to the divorce that uh, Gabriela Women's Party is pushing for is not similar to the divorce which is being practiced in other countries it is not a no fault divorce that we are pushing for one of the conditions we are saying is that divorce can be granted to couples who have been separated for five years or more so they have already been separated so that means that we can grant divorce to them we can easily circumvent the law if i do not want to stay long, any minute longer with my wife, all I have to do is to live separately from my wife for a period of five years, and after five years, I file a, I file a proceeding in court in order to obtain a divorce. Mm -hmm. And? And? What, what's wrong with that? Well, the, uh, what is wrong with that is that definitely we can expect that there would be hasty, hasty divorces in our country, in as much as the grounds are very simple. Moreover, I think it would be only an illusory solution to the problems considering that it would be really expensive. Luz, that's a point. I mean, divorce would take a very long time, would possibly be just as costly as the options no. that are available now. We have ensured that one of the provisions of the proposed bill is that there should be a fast resolution of the case and in fact if couples have already been separated for at least five years or even more so it's just a matter of applying for this divorce and also it may be expensive but it would not be as expensive as the other options at the same time though Luz you know there are a lot of people here in the Philippines who are from the conservative side who say that if divorce is an option then that then we lose the sanctity of marriage do you think that would be the case no, a lot of marriages have already failed, so these people want to be able to move on, to be clarified with regard the property, the conjugal property, and also the aggrieved party being supported, because there are a lot of couples who have split up, uh, the marriage has definitely failed, and then the husband has not been supporting the family. So if we have divorce, we can clarify these issues. Elpidio, that's a good point, though. With the options that are currently available, neither party is being held accountable for the family that they've created you know no one is being told that you need to pay alimony or you need to pay child maintenance don't you think that a divorce legislation would have clear-cut rules for both parties well i still believe in the saying that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure i see divorce as a remedial measure on my side i would prepare preventive measure such as marriage counseling before the marriage and even during marriage is stressing to the couple that when they enter into a contract of marriage they could not expect that that marriage will be like in heaven there will be problems there will be difficulties and therefore they have to resolve all these problems within the family in order to preserve the sanctity of the family and in order to have a strong foundation for our society. Anna, from your experience of counseling couples for so many years, do you think that if divorce was an option, people would not take their marriages seriously? I don't think so because even women who have been into a battering situation for a long time, they don't actually want to separate from the relationship. All they wanted to is actually to stop the violence. But then violence did not stop, you know. So what they wanted eventually is to get out of the relationship because they wanted to uh, put themselves in a safety and security measure. El Pidio. If violence happens to be the ground for divorce, I don't think that the divorce would be a proper remedy. 
I think that women should stand and should be firm in fighting for their rights. Because if the woman would be seeking divorce only on account of the violence being accepted on her, in the event that she would be able to obtain divorce, there is no guarantee that her next husband would not exert violence on her. Moreover, her first husband might use also the same violence in the event that he would enter into another contract of marriage. So in this particular case, in so far as battered women are concerned, I think we have proper legal remedies. So would you Filing say then if you case. are a battered woman in yes. a domestic abuse situation, you have to stay in the marriage and try and keep the marriage going? No. We have legal separation. They can, uh, the battered women can file a case, a criminal case against her husband. But I don't think divorce would be a proper remedy. Under our laws, the woman in this particular case can file a case for legal separation and be separated from her husband, not to mention her right to file criminal cases. But you know, Elpidio, having done this story and having spoken to many people on the ground here, even if you have legal separation, both parties still go on and have other families and have other children as well. And these children are seen as illegitimate because yes. both parties have not been able to end their marriage because of legal separation. Don't you think that divorce would then give both parties a second chance? So in this particular case, divorce would legitimize their illicit relationship. But we have also to consider that if we allow divorce in this country, we can expect so many couples obtaining divorce even for flimsy reasons. However, we are talking about a Catholic country here that is majority conservative and where the Catholic Church is very, very powerful. Is the Catholic Church influencing legislators to stop this bill from going through? Is the Catholic Church meddling in state affairs? Well, so far as I'm concerned, I don't see any meddling in so far as the Catholic Church is concerned. But to most Filipinos who are really Catholic, who have already embraced the Catholic faith, without any intervention from the Roman Catholic Church, they would be making their opposition known in so far as the divorce bill is concerned. Luz, do you think the Catholic Church is perhaps in some way influencing legislators who depend on the support of the Catholic Church in order to stop this bill from going through? Oh yes, definitely. The Catholic Church has been very vocal when it came to uh, this proposal. But surely Even, they have a right though, because oh they are yes. the Catholic Church, yes. they are the keepers of the faith. True, they have a right, but people also have a right to have another option. People don't have to get divorced if they don't want to be divorced, but it is there. What we are saying is that here is another legal remedy available for those who want to get it. We are coming from a very conservative Catholic country. Do you think this divorce bill will ever be passed? Well, uh, I'm still hoping it will be passed. Divorce is not alien to the Philippine culture. We had divorce during the American and Japanese occupation. We had divorce during the Spanish time. And we had it until 1950 when the family code was amended. And so what are we afraid of? All we are saying is that let's provide another option for those who really want to get out of unhappy marriages, still respecting marriage, still respecting the family. It's a very important institution, but to women and men, there should be another legal remedy, and that is divorce Filipino style. Anna, do you think this divorce Filipino style will actually come through at some point? I am hoping because I believe that it can help a lot of women, most especially those who are in a violent relationship and who wanted to get out of that and have an option that they can afford to. So I'm, I am hoping and it's, it's very hypocrite for our society to um, actually deprive them you know, from that option. Because uh, you know, if we're thinking of uh, the sanctity of marriage, it's no longer there you know, for those who are separated already. Elpidio, do you think this bill will ever be passed in well, Catholic I don't majority think that it Philippines? Will ever be passed because we look at it not from the personal point of view of the married couple, but from the interest of the society as a whole. We still believe that a strong family is needed in order to have a strong nation, and that all depends on a strong marriage. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us today. That's all the time we have for this edition of 101 East. You can always follow the program through our website, podcast, Facebook and Twitter. From all the team here in Manila, Philippines, thank you for watching.